way that we get the administration on board is really by developing this groundswell of support for this shift in policy. And basically the pro-business argument here is that when you are paying people a more decent wage, right. that basically you're creating stability in the workforce, you're creating more productive uh, employees, more loyal employees, and so it is beneficial to the bottom line of the business to create that sense of consistency. On the social end, you know, you're creating people that are developing pride in the work that they do, uh, that are able to provide more for their families, that aren't going to have to seek social support mechanisms to in order to enhance their quality of life, and that so that in the end is a win-win for everybody involved. Um, clearly, you know, the, 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 the businesses would probably think that just because they get less of a profit in the end, that it's something that they wouldn't want to support. But the majority of us uh, believe that this is the right approach, and so that groundswell and coalition building that we alluded to in the discussion is critical uh, to basically force this administration to have to adopt and concede to this type of public policy. Right. Well, I mean, the, the, my, my bill has about 33 council members out of 51 that are signed on. Uh, and then the living wage is being introduced tomorrow. So it really is between the two looking at a whole swath of, uh, of employees. Mine is specifically about business, uh, building service workers, but the living wage bill looks at anybody or any entity that receives some type of public subsidy needs to provide for quality living wage jobs. So it really looks at that whole perspective. And we all, are, you know, obviously this is, this is of importance to the Progressive Caucus. It's important to uh, the vast majority of us in the council. So we just get any, we have to be steadfast we have to continue to really develop those linkages with the uh, our allies in the in the public uh, in the public and to really build that, that sense of support to really move these and fast track these legislation you know the, these uh, these bills into law right um, so just to, to build upon that so in the coming weeks should we be expecting um, lots of press conferences and, and other actions you talked about how we really need to act now to build this groundswell of support. Can you be a little more concrete or specific? Any any bits of news or things on the horizon maybe yet that haven't been officially disclosed that you could you could um, you could mention here? Well I mean the way any legislative process works is that you know we, we did introduce the bill, we had our hearing, we heard the concerns that were raised by those who may not necessarily 100% supportive of the measure. Right. And now we have to go back and negotiate and make changes and amendments to the bill. That takes some time, but clearly we want that sense of urgency to be very present. And the way that we have that sense of urgency is by getting consistent pressure um, from those that want to see this enacted. So it is having press conferences, it is having public forums, events, dialogues, right. that is constant, it's constantly buzzing and out there as, as a conversation mm. to let people know that this is something that I'm concerned about, this is something that I want to see my government uh, put forth, and then that way it's going to really help us to, to move this much more quickly and enact it and have it be the law of the land, so to speak. So we're really excited about it, and um, I think that uh, it's, there's a lot of promise here, and I'm very excited because, again, we are moving the public policy conversation in a different direction of where it's been, uh, benefiting just a few. Now we're looking at more consistently benefiting the majority in the city, and that's really important in this time.